poems about movies. And most of the movies I wind up writing about, most people have never seen. Um, but I've recently started writing about some science fiction movies and some other blockbusters because I'm running out of ones that I've watched that nobody else has. And this is uh, based on the most recent Star Trek movie. This is not your parents' Star Trek, nor your grandparents'. This is Gene Roddenberry's vision on steroids, or drugs, for the age of Lost and Avatar. This is the Enterprise crew reimagined by the mind of an outsider coming fresh to the material. The characters are the same, though they post with a postmodern take that transcends the original hippie vibe and presents it with gritty realism we have come to expect of our blockbusters. Kirk, he's still a jerk, who happens to guess right more often than not. Spock, he's still one step removed from becoming a machine. Scotty still works wonders and speaks in his incomprehensible brogue. McCoy remains a skeptic of anything not medically certain. Sulu keeps a steady, helm on, steady, steady hand on the helm with only hint of his later flamboyance. Chekhov this time is actually played by a legitimate Russian, a native who can speak the accent with some degree of accuracy. And Uhura, she seems much more alluring than the original model, but maybe that's because 60s fashions are, seem more laughable than sexy to our jaded eyes. I get all that. Star Trek needed a jump start to save the franchise from several bad missteps. But did we have to rewrite the entire canon to fix the damage done by weak movies and a completely unimaginative prequel series? More to the point, did we have to blow up an entirely innocent planet to just to stir up interest in a sci-fi future approaching its fifth decade? Kirk rigged the Kobayu, uh, can't even say this word, Kobayashi Maru simulation because he doesn't believe in no-win scenarios. That much remains the same. Well, if he could only figure out how to do the same kind of trick to keep Vulcan from vaporizing into a billion particles of space detritus. detritus. Or maybe it's merely the first installment of a visionary trilogy director J.J. Abrams has safely tucked up his sleeve. Maybe we'll see the restoration of Spock's home planet through some temporal wormhole before the final credits on that future film. Or maybe not. In any case, there's a villain from the future who kills a lot of people, blows up planets, and generally screws with the timeline. But in a Star Trek so drastically revised, even a hulking bad guy seems irrelevant. When they left the theaters, nobody was talking about how amazing Nero was, nor even how he stole his name from a matricidal pyromaniac Roman emperor. No, what was on everyone's mind is this. This film just screwed everything we thought we knew.